Greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Well, well, there's been a lot of news recently, as we all know, about somebody who's going to turn 40 tomorrow. I wonder if he's going to go from suckling stage to baby talk. Oh, we can be ever hopeful. But maybe I shouldn't be so sarcastic because he does know how to big talk. But he's going to be 40 tomorrow. And my goodness, haven't they been making hay while the sun shines? And everybody who isn't totally loose has been really rather annoyed. So I'm going to plunge in with what Valerie Matthews says. Harry needs to butt out, big block capitals, of our politics, exclamation marks, especially the First Amendment. Harry's activities in the United States of America are totally out of line for a foreign prince who is not a citizen of the United States and not even a proper resident. And you're right, how dare he butt into your politics especially the First Amendment, which is one of the cornerstones of the American Constitution. This is where the king could actually and should actually draw a line and take a stand and make it absolutely clear that Harry does not have his approval when he interferes with American politics, nor when he interferes with trying to when trying to tamper with the American Constitution. I think the king could and should do something publicly. Of course, you can depend on it. He has done a lot privately. What do you think ambassadors are for? What do you think private secretaries are for? And there's even a rumour that Sir Clive Alderton might be made the ambassador to the United States of America, depending on who is elected president. Well, I think that would be a great loss to the king in terms of his private secretary. But it might be necessary with regards to other matters. Mandy Ward says, Lady C, what is your take on the A1 visa that Harry is in America with? This means he is there under government and all royal duties. This has to be renewed yearly. So it would have been first signed by the Queen and then Charles. I have listened to and mentioning a YouTube, which I'm not going to mention because I think it would be impolite of me to do so something's take on this however i'd rather have your input as i trust your opinion more all the more reason for me to draw a veil of secrecy and hopefully a touch of modesty over that question <sighs> harry is the member of a royal family. He is the son of a head of state. 
the category of visa that Harry is on is reserved to heads of state and their immediate families. He's not there as a head of state. He's there as a close relation of a head of state. There's no big conspiracy as to why he is there on that visa. He is there on that visa because if he were there on any other visa and became a resident of the United States of America in the ordinary course of things, Uncle Sam would have the right, indeed some people would say the duty, to investigate his affairs. As long as Harry is there on what we can loosely call a head of state and family visa, Uncle Sam has no right to inquire into his trusts, etc. If Uncle Sam wanted to, when Harry was a regular resident, Uncle Sam would be able to not only delve into Harry's affairs, but he, they, Uncle Sam would have the right to investigate the remainder of the trust and everybody concerned with it under the basis of the fact that he, they were investigating Harry's affairs. I said this in a previous video, and to those of you who have heard it before, please bear with me, it bears repeating. This is a standard situation I've tried to point out before that there was no way Harry would be booted out of the United States of America, irrespective of whom was in power. Of who was in power, sorry. He is the younger son of the head of state of an ally of the United States of America. It's called courtesy. Of course, if he broke a law, a serious law, that would be another matter. Now, I've also mentioned previously, privately, and I'm going to do it now, uh, not so privately, that when my mother was dying, she was not able to execute her affairs. So one of her next of kings, which would have been me and my two sisters, had to become a signatory on her accounts in Grand Cayman. The bank refused to have either of my sisters as a co-signatory because they're American citizens. And our banker told me that he could have me because I'm British and Jamaican. They are Jamaican and American and my other sister's Canadian as well. And they could, would not have them because of their American citizenships because they will not have an American citizen or resident as a client of the bank. Why? Because it gives Uncle Sam the right to inspect. And once they started, they would follow the train. Oh, well, no, that's fine, but let, we need to investigate further and creating absolute havoc and violating everybody else's rights. That's why Harry is on the visa he's on. He can't become a regular resident of the United States of America without endangering the whole of the royal family's financial 
holdings because of Uncle Sam. So, I hope that explains the situation once and for all. Q PR says, Lady C, two questions if you please. One, what do you make of the revelation that Harry himself is one of People Magazine's sources? I thought he hated the press and can't stand having his privacy violated. And two, what do you make of Meghan objecting to Samantha referring to her in the lawsuit as Meghan Markle instead of Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex? Okay. <laughs> first things first. Harry has let the cat out of the bag. <gasps> I can't stand publicity. Oh, I hate everybody. Oh, sorry. Oh, I can't stand publicity. I hate everybody violating my privacy. Oh, oh, every time I see a camera, I scar oh, 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 right back. <laughs> oh, I learned from Maxie Baby how I'm supposed to smile, and I just love it. Harry loves the attention. And Harry has outed himself. Well, People Magazine have outed Harry by making it clear that Harry emailed them with the news that he's going to be having a boys celebration for his 40th. They're going to leave the girls. I wonder what else they're going to do. I hope they take tissues because they might have runny noses. I mean, the weather might become very inclement and they might actually end up catching cold. Of course, they might not as well, because Harry has been at great pains to describe his lifestyle, which is a study in empty-minded inactivity. He rides his bike around the place with his security. In other words, he does nothing all day. He, well, he does something. He exercises and he feeds the children. And he's made it very clear that he loves the children, which is wonderful. And that they have helped to make his life, which I'm sure they have. I wonder if he doesn't slightly regret with whom he made arrangements so that they would come into the world. He called them his best gift. So he emailed people. <laughs> and then after that cat is out of the bag, they're speaking about a source, <laughs> which is obviously Harry. Oh. And that he's now focused on enjoying life with his family after years of self-reflection. <laughs> navel, navel, what are you going to tell? Oh, sorry. Navel, navel, what are you going to tell me about myself? Navel says, H. Why don't you run to Megsy Baby and get her to tell you what mom has been telling her? Because mom has been telling her all sorts of things. <laughs> I think the whole thing is farcical. And I think it's just ridiculous. And I think that... Uh, You couldn't make any of this up. But did you notice that when they were at that book club launch, and I'm all in favour of book clubs, I don't recall that anybody ever said that Harry and Meghan were great readers. But I suppose they will now lay claim to bibliophilia 
the way they have laid claim to everything else that they have no talent or interest in except for sound bites. But did you notice, it was really rather funny, how Megsy Baby is uh, giving her speech and, oh, isn't it just wonderful? And I just love books, blah, blah, blah. Yawnsville. And who crosses the path of the camera? But Oprah in the middle of the speech. And did you see the look Megsy Baby shot her? Let me tell you something. That sort of thing doesn't happen by accident. Oprah isn't that crass, crude and unprofessional. Oprah, I doff my chapeau at you. You've managed to get a point across very subtly. So, insofar as the bit about Megan complaining that, which her lawyers have complained to the court, evidently, that her sister Samantha has been referring to her in the lawsuit, which has now been going on for some considerable length of time. She's finally complained about the fact that she is referred to as Meghan Markle instead of Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Well, there's no human being called Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. It is the Duchess of Sussex or Rachel Meghan Markle, comma, Duchess of Sussex, which would be maiden name and title, but she is correctly the Duchess of Sussex, no Meghan in front of it. But what is really interesting is that Meghan, a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat who just loves the people, is so desperate to distance herself from anything ordinary, including being untitled. Not that titles matter to her, of course, because remember how she said, oh, titles, she doesn't care about titles, and titles are insignificant and unimportant. However, make sure you use man at all times, otherwise I'm going to run you over. Well, the rub is, as an American citizen, Meghan cannot officially use a foreign title. She can use it as an alias, but she should not be using it in official papers. Oh dear, oh dear, how does that one work? Problema, problema. Problema. Mm. You couldn't make any of this up, could you? Mary Grace Hutchinson says, Dear Lady C, I have come to ask you for you to explain and to shed some light on the following statement made by a BBC pre presenter. I cannot find their name or which... TV program, etc., in regards to Catherine, Princess of Wales. Quote, if they just go straight to social media and ignore what you describe as the legacy media, the host contended, they're not opening up themselves to any accountability, any questioning from the royal correspondents. So we're not on sympathetic but there's no public accountability from a family that's paid for by the British taxpayers. One, how can the royal family or anyone be accountable to the public about their medical condition? Is this not an invasion of privacy? Yes, 
it is an invasion of privacy. And let me read the question of the part first and then do both at once. Two, why do these people always claim that the royal family is paid for by the British taxpayers? I wanted to make a complaint, but I cannot find the original clip anywhere. Thank you for your help. Very frustrated, annoyed fan. <laughs> well, Mary Grace Hutchinson, you've certainly alighted upon subjects of interest. First of all, Meghan and Harry, when they do it, they're not criticised, but when William and Catherine do it, they are. And the fact of the matter is, as I explained in my book, Meghan and Harry, the Real Story, Persecutors or Victims, the rota system, which was set up for representative members of the press to have access to the royal family, works both ways and it benefits both the press and the royal family. But William and Catherine are taking advantage of social media, as indeed have Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan did it deliberately and stated they were doing it deliberately to cut out the rota photographers, the rota reporters, and to go directly to the public. They pretended they were going to do it to encourage small outlets and start up reporters and journalists and photographers, which of course they haven't done at all. It was all typical rubbish from Harry and Meghan. Well, William and Catherine haven't even explained. They've just gone directly and because she has an interest in photography, they have posted one or two things directly. Well, you can't open yourself up to, for accountability when you are discussing a medical problem because anything you say is voluntary and anything you don't want to say you are people are obliged to respect that choice and if they fail to do so it is a violation of the privacy of the person so you're absolutely right but the complaint is that they go straight to social media and that they ignore the legacy media. Mm. And that means they're not opening themselves up to any accountability. Well, they're still, account they're still opening themselves up to accountability because not at the time of creation of the article, or the program, but everybody has a right to open their mouth and criticize afterwards as they do. Now, I think in fairness to the BBC presenter that the mainstream media do need to be kept in the picture as much as possible because a free press is an extremely important part of a free democratic society. And anything that undermines the strength and the viability and the survivability of a free press should be discouraged. So I actually think the presenter has a point just not in this instance, but I understand where they're coming from and why they've made the point. And, but they then shoot themselves in the foot by saying 
There's no public accountability from a family that's paid for by ta the British taxpayers. They're not paid for by the British taxpayers. They have turned over the revenue of their properties to the state and have done it since the reign of George III, in return for which they get a percentage of the profits and it's a relatively minor percentage of the income from the states that they, the estates that they have turned over to the state. So if anything, they are giving the taxpayer, the taxpayer isn't giving them. I've covered this before and I'm sure I'm going to have to cover it again and again and again because this is a bugbear that anti-royalists have. Oh, they're being supported by the state. Oh, look at that. They should be accountable to us. They are accountable to the public, whether taxpayers or not, because remember, a goodly percentage of the people in this country pay no tax whatsoever. On the contrary, they live off the fat of the land from taxpayers like you and me. So, to those of you who are British and pay tax. Uh, but they are accountable and they remain accountable and they should be accountable because they are the living embodiments and representatives of all the people and they are figureheads who, and therefore they are accountable and should be accountable, not only to taxpayers, but to non-taxpayers as well. Anne Moore says, Lady C, total change of topic. What's your take on the PM saying that the NHS isn't fit for purpose and needs to reform or die? To those of you who are foreign who don't know what that question is, I will explain. The PM is the Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer. The NHS is the National Health Service. And it's finally a politician has had the courage to speak the truth. I have said repeatedly on this channel that the NHS is not fit for purpose and it needs to be reformed. And I didn't think that any politician would have the courage to declare and do something about it. Well, Keir Starmer has said, and I take my hat off to him, it does need to reform or it will collapse. And he's absolutely right. Throwing more money at it isn't going to make any difference. I have a friend who was, who's a very eminent doctor, who was poached from a very eminent position to advise on ways of reforming the NHS. And he sat right over there two years ago and said he didn't see how it was going to be possible because it's a sacred cow, a political hot potato, and no political party had the will to, to do what they needed to do. It needs to be completely revamped from top to bottom. It is a walking, talking disaster and people are suffering as a result. Not only those who are ill, but those who are well and are paying their tax, which is then frittered away in the National Health Service by layers of managers who are totally incompetent, don't know what they're doing and don't care. Oh, we'll put in this new system, 10 million pounds data. Oh, well, it doesn't work. Oh, well, we'll just do it again. Because there's a very cavalier attitude that a lot of people have to spending other people's money. And other people's money means taxpayers' money. Because those fat cats, they may have their taxes deducted at source by the PAYE system. But I can tell you something, 
they are on far larger wages than they should be. So I think good for Sir Keir Starmer. I am all in favour of the overall thing. Let's see how he does it, however, and let's see if they end up doing it. I hope they do, because it needs to be done. It is a massive waste of our resources and of what the original purpose of the NHS was. I will say it's absolutely wonderful when people are tremendously ill and dying. The way my brother was treated was wonderful. I can't, I could not sing their praises highly enough then, and I can't now. But I can't get an appointment to go to an NHS doctor. First of all, you can't even phone because they don't answer the wretched phone. Then, if you finally get an appointment, oh well, oh, you know, I'm going to die in two hours if you don't. Oh well, why don't you come? Why don't you phone back next week because we're, we're our appointments off. Excuse me, I'm going to die in two hours. Oh well, oh, get your ghost to phone. I mean, that's the ridiculous state of affairs. So, hopeless. If you don't have a private doctor in this country, you are stuffed like a dead bird. Angela Jacobi says, I think Harry's head and Meghan's team are now at odds. A household person let slip that Harry sobbed at Catherine's video, left and cleaned up, brought out the children when Megan returned home. She was gripping her phone so hard when she saw the video playing, her fingers turned coloured. Well, I'm glad finally something did without being bronzed up. She allegedly left to make dinner, scream and Netflix at Netflix via the phone and was breaking dishes. Oh dear, how agreeable. <laughs> LOL, on Claire, if the children asked or Megan demanded that they play board games with grandma, like the cousins. Sounds like the tension in the air had to be cut with a chainsaw and everyone was on edge to see what Megan was going to be like once the children were off to bed. Sounds credible. Sounds very credible. I'm not familiar with uh, what you're referring to, but sounds credible. What can I tell you? You make your bed, you lie in it. You lie down with, with dogs, you come up with fleas. Obviously not my dogs. Uh, you're a pig, even if you put on lipstick, you're still grunt. Need I say more? And when I say it sounds credible, I mean, I have heard of situations along similar lines. It has the ring of truth. And not only with that relationship, Megan is evidently a very volatile and does not believe in hiding her light under a bushel, not when she can blast it in all directions. I think her previous men have confirmed that to friends. I'm going to hide behind the veil of, I think. But believe me, I know. True Patriot says, you probably feel uncomfortable 
because the royal couple have never shown this side to their family. They don't even hold hands on royal duties. The sickness has changed the family, I'm sure, and it might be changes coming with the next royal family that will take the throne at some point. Prince Charles was raised in a loving home. Sorry, PC. I presume that is short for Princess Catherine. Sorry, I'm not used to her being a Princess Catherine. She's Catherine or the Princess of Wales. But so I and PC usually stands where I'm concerned for Prince Charles. So sorry, but it doesn't make sense as Prince Charles. PC was raised in a loving home, and she probably wants to portray that they are raising their family the same way. Yes, the whole business of the public displays of affection and the loving nature of the family uh, and uh, giving such glimpses of affection and intimacy have caused talk. Now, I'm all in favour of talk if it's going to be constructive. And I basically think that in this situation, it is constructive because, as I have said before, and I'm going to repeat it again, this was an opportunity for the Waleses to defeat the stories that started about their marriage when Harry and Meghan were in Amsterdam for the opening of Soho House and all of a sudden Jazz Corrin was making statements which have then he has subsequently retracted but they have been fl floating around like feces in an unflushed lavatory bowl since then and there have been so many variations on the theme that that I'm not even going to go into any of them except to say this was an opportunity to show that the in private are a loving family and they don't need to hold hands as if they are going to disappear into thin air if they don't hold hands at all time like teenagers love sick teenagers did you notice how megan insisted in columbia hand and harry had to give her his hand aren't we loved up mm. gabby gabberson says hello lady c this doesn't have anything to do with today's video but i'm wondering why the markers are being attacked lately there are a few youtubers making quite nasty videos about thomas senior thomas jr and samantha and i can't fathom why they are even talking bad about you and the GoFundMe you started. I find it quite distasteful for people to do this to an ailing man who has done nothing wrong and you who did a wonderful thing for his birthday. The Markles have been quiet lately. Have you heard from any of them? Is Thomas Senior doing all right? I have heard from them. Uh, I will say that they have been going through a particularly poignant and let's leave it a poignant time as a family recently because of something else to do with someone else i'm not going to say who or what because they haven't made any of this public and it's not in my place to make it public for them but they have certainly had a valid reason for really being pretty quiet, as would anybody in that sort of circumstance. So, 
as for the you're saying the a lot of YouTubers have been attacking them recently. So I've heard. And yes, I've heard that I've been put in the frame as well. And indeed, one or two creeps have, and I've simply just blocked them, have one of them uh, asked uh, something about what have what has Thomas have Thomas Senior and I done with the money that that I that I raised. I thought, excuse me, and just blocked the I thought, I'm not putting up with this impertinence from anybody and just blocked the creature. But there have been one or two of those comments uh, implying that I've made off with the money or some such thing. I mean, I wouldn't even condescend to answer the question. I just blocked the cow. And there have been one or two others, some of which I've let stand, but when they stray into absolute impertinence. I just block them. I mean, after all, I would really be very, very weak-minded if I was going to endure abuse from people who are clearly being abusive. And so, and whatever else goes on on any of the other channels, basically, I don't know. I don't look at them. I am going to be starving them of attention. I have better things to do with my time than waste. But why do they do it? Obviously for a new angle. They don't know what's really going on. They don't know how to properly analyze what's going on. They are, they have been I gather some of them have been functioning in echo chambers for some time. I don't know which ones and which ones have and which ones haven't. I'm just going off what I've been told. And so they have new targets. They have new content so they can go with a new narrative. And I just feel sorry for people who believe the rubbish. But if they find it entertaining, well, then maybe my sympathies are misguided. But insofar as I'm concerned, I don't think people on this channel are going to be stupid or naive or ignorant or malicious or well, let's stop there enough to go for any of those crazy, bizarre scenarios that are evidently being mooted. But, you know, there was a variation of this when Catherine was ill and absent. And, you know, they had all sorts of really crazy stories, uh, none of which I'm even going to deign to go into. I mean, just absolute crazy stuff. And so this is the latest embellishment. And shall I tell you something? I take the view, we live in a free society. Freedom of speech is important. If people want to believe rubbish, who am I to stop them from believing it? They're entitled to believe it. I do draw the line at people trying to make out that I have somehow <laughs> raised money for Thomas Markle and pocketed some of it myself. Like I'd need to do that and even if I needed to do it, that I would do it. I mean, just ridiculous. But it shows it it shows how debased their mentalities and their th thinking would be. Not it's not a reflection on me. And let me see. Yes, it is distasteful that they're doing it to an ailing man. But also, let's not forget the content creators might just be going out on a limb, but many of the people who then 
get roped in and play the game could well be people who are followers of Harry and Meghan, the Sussex squad, that whole scenario. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's basically immaterial. If people want to say it and believe nonsense, let them. At least it shows we are living in a robust society where freedom of speech prevails to such an extent that the people can come up with rubbish and actually have it furthered as if it were not rubbish. So I think that's my position. And on that note, I'll say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what you would like us to be speaking about. Okay, thank you so much. Take good care. God bless. And if you have truly enjoyed this, would you care to like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and Godspeed. Bye-bye. And as promised, I am going to share today and every other day for the next week or two the blurb about kids out and also show you how if you would wish to make a contribution you can. I have been happy to make a contribution. It is a genuine charity. It has, it has a charity number registered with the charity commissioners and I think it's a wonderful cause. So God bless you. Bye-bye.